Hey, you left the puppy on the couch. What the heck? Who the heck is that? What the hell? What are you doing my with my puppy? My puppy? What the heck? What is going on, guys? How the heck are you? What are you doing? Who are you? When did you get here? Richard's mother. You're Richard's mom? Since when? Since we bought him. <laughs> oh, she's back! Back, ladies and gents. It's kind of exciting. Better than ever. Better than ever. That's good news. At least we got some sort of good news today for everybody. Yeah, for real. Because today is not, today is honestly not very good news. Not good at all. So, let's just uh, get to it. All right, so enough horsing around here. Oh, we got some uh, some touchy things to talk about today. Touchy touchersons. Yeah, which I'm honestly pretty worried about. Not fun touchers. Not fun at all. Oh, we got Olive in here. You want to grab that little cat? There's no bueno. Can't have cats in the death room. In the room of death. On the flip side, though, guys, before we start talking about the negative stuff that is going to happen today, let's look at these Insularis. These Insularis are doing absolutely fabulous. These guys are getting huge. They are all pretty much eating on their own, except for these two baby babies, okay? So these are the two baby Insularis that were just born. I'm still trying to get them to eat. Um, we have it. It's that it's a weird time of the year right now. There's not too many baby anoles out in the backyard as there was in the beginning or the end of summer last year when these other ones were babies. So it's a lot harder to find baby anoles right now. We just need to, uh, we've had some kind of cold days recently too. So when it's cold and muggy outside like it is today, it's really hard for, it's really hard to go out and catch anoles because they like to come out during the daytime. They bask in the sunlight and the bushes and stuff. You walk along the bushes, you grab them, you feed them to the snakes. It's pretty easy. It's been kind of hard to catch them lately. So hopefully we're gonna go to underground later today. We're gonna get some baby frogs, some baby anoles for them, and they're gonna eat. But the main point of this freaking video are my poor Mangshan vipers, man. They are doing absolutely amazing though. Like look how much bigger they're getting. We're gonna we're gonna give them new cages soon. I have two new exoterras that are twice the size of these cages in the garage okay um, and probably later later this week we're gonna set them up in their new cages in their new quarantining room because unfortunately we're, we might have to quarantine them again we might just put them in quarantine probably today. for today yes definitely for today because we just had a little scare okay so with that said I'm not gonna go naming any names um, because of a few of these people are very good friends of mine. Yeah, there's no, there's nobody to blame. Um, this stuff like this happens, you know, and it's uncontrollable or it's, it is controllable, but it also isn't. Um, it's hard to regulate, you know, things that happen with snakes. There's so many different diseases and respiratory infections and all sorts of crazy things that can happen with your snakes. So the main scare that we just got is that these mangshans, when they came into this country, um, they were imported in with a bunch of other animals from South Africa and um, a couple other places from China, I think, this shipment. Well, there, was a, there was a bunch of different localities in this around. shipment. Yeah, all sorts of stuff. They went to a bunch of different collections. They moved around. Some of them went to this one person. He gave a bunch of, half of them to this other guy. They were at his house in his collection. Regardless of the situation, oh, there she is. Regardless of the situation, somebody came down somehow. Paramyxovirus got introduced to this clutch of mangshans that came into the country. So, a bunch of these snakes apparently have this virus, and it's a bad virus, okay? It's not a good one, that's for sure. Yeah, it doesn't attack all snakes it's more so vipers and stuff yeah. okay so like the cobras and all that should be relatively safe I'm not saying they can't get it I don't know a whole lot about the virus okay I've been reading up about it for the last all night I was reading up on it um, it's 
it has lots of different symptoms and it can stay dormant for a while too which is the crazy part so like your snakes could have the virus they can test positive for it but the symptoms might not be active until the symptoms are active your snakes will be fine and then one day your snakes get stressed out for whatever reason their body can't fight it anymore. Exactly, your body can't fight it anymore, can't keep it dormant anymore, so then things, the symptoms start becoming active, and then your snakes get sick, your snakes get sick, and then they all start dying, which is terrible. I do not want any of my snakes to die, obviously. All my snakes, I have a small collection. This is my nice, small, personal collection here. Yes, I know it's not that small, it's small. It's small. small person. Yeah, these, it's small. See some these are some of my, yeah, exactly. You should see some people's other collections. Like, this is, these are my, like, favorite animals, pretty much. Like, not all my favorites, but I keep what I like. You know what I mean? Now, there's a lot of different, a lot of different symptoms. And I'm going to go ahead and read some to you guys right now because I have them on my phone. Abscess in the mouth, cheese like pus in the mouth, diarrhea, difficulty striking, head tremors, increased respiratory sounds, lethargic, nasal just. Nasal discharge, open mouth breathing, open mouth breathers. I don't like open mouth breathing. If you breathe with your mouth open, get together. I'm not. I'm not about mouth breathers. Ugh. Sneezing, weakness, weight loss, wheezing. Paramyxo is currently known as the Fertilance Paramyxo virus. Blah blah blah. Um, so yeah, it causes a lot of respiratory infections, um, neurological disturbances, things like that. They can just wipe out your collection. It is one of those viruses that just kills everything. And it's not like it's a treatable thing. There is no direct cure for this. So there's nothing I can just give my animals if they have it, and then they'll be fine, and then they won't die. The way that people treat them is they take the animals that are supposedly with, that supposedly are positive with the virus, and they euthanize them. It sucks. We ain't gonna do it. Yeah, we're definitely not killing you know, my mangs, dude, no. waited so long. And the thing that I honestly, I do not think personally that mine do it. They're really healthy. They're very they're healthy. A lot. They're very healthy animals and they, they eat great. There's no difficulty striking at all. No, <laughs> no, no difficulty striking. They are fast strikers. They're agile. They breathe fine. They don't, they don't wheeze. They're, they shed normal. They drink normal. They are doing fantastic so me personally I do not think that my snakes have that but we are going to take the precautions gotta be safe yes and when we're done shooting this video we are going to move them into this is my bathroom in the uh, this is in my snake room so legally I have to keep my snakes in this snake room okay it's an escape proof room that anything gets out of their cages it's easy to find in here the vents are closed the windows are tight Doors underneath are sealed. Everything is locked. You know, this is the safe room that I have to keep them in. So, unfortunately, the rehabilitation quarantine room needs to be in this room still. So I'm gonna put them in the bathroom. That's what we're gonna do today. Yeah, and then we're sending out, we're swabbing these snakes. Already swabbed them actually. And uh, we sent out the test results. So hopefully, in the next couple days, we are going to get the test results from these animals back. And a few other of my friends also sent out test results to get tested as well. Now, I personally believe that whoever the snakes went to after the first house, um, that is where they got them from. Not from my first friend that brought them in. So hopefully I'm going to be fine because a lot of other people had these snakes that they're dead. Yeah, a lot. And From the start. Dead. Yeah. yeah, already dead. These, would have already, probably these already guys would have already been sick and would have already died. So I'm hopefully, fingers crossed, you guys crossed them too. And if anybody knows anything about Paramixo out there that watches these videos, feel free to comment down below. I'm not a, yeah, I'm a professional, but I'm not an expert. I don't know everything about these animals. Yeah, exactly, dude. I'm still, I'm still learning things every day. Every time I come in here and we do snake stuff, you're learning obviously every day. But dude, I still... You are always learning, you know what I mean? The day that you think that you're done learning things is the day that you start to digress, you know what I mean? You never know everything. You never. always have to be open to learning more things and figuring out things and just changing with the times, okay? So, let's, uh, don't we have some food for Rusty too? Let's do something cool for this video. I know, this is a bad, 
This is a this is such an annoying video of bad news, and it's yeah, it's not very fun. So let's uh look at this big old big conjo. Snake, man. Yeah, there's a big conjo, dude. This is probably one of the biggest, dude. Look at that. Four and a half feet long. That's probably the biggest snake that we fed Rusty so far. Not bad, bro. Well, here yeah, let's like uh it. let's trade off. I'm gonna give you the camera so everything's a little safe. Russ, hey, Mr. Russ, man. Hey, dude. Dude, he's getting big, bro. Like, dude, look how big he's getting. It's absolutely crazy, and I see him all the freaking time, dude. It's just wild. Like, look at this guy. Look at him. He is a monster. Look at that. Hey, bro. Look, check it out. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Perfect, bro. What a great snake, man. So... Boom, we're just gonna let Rusty eat this chondro right here. Put that like that. Dude, that is a good size meal, bro. Like, look at this thing. Look at that. Compared to him, look at that, bro. Like, that's a good size snake, dude. Yeah, that's right. Because Rusty's probably like seven feet long now. And that chondro is easy four and a half, five. Looking pretty awesome, dude. Pretty great. Oh yeah. Oh, so but that's just how it goes. That's how keeping snakes is. That's how that's why it's very important for you to quarantine your snakes when you get them in. And you know, it depends on where I get snakes from. Most of the time I quarantine everything, but sometimes I get them from friends and I know their collections are safe. So yeah. then I don't. Right. You know, yeah, that's that's my call though, you know? It's not like I have to. That's my call. They're my animals, my call, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But everything is doing great. Yesterday we were in here, we fed everything yesterday. Yeah. Um, all the, yeah, all the insularis are eating great. Remember this little green, um, this Christmas tree eyelash viper right here? He's been eating on his own every time now. I don't have to scent anything for him. Remember he was a pain in the ass before. Everything is doing great other than that. Um, the gaboon viper and the rhino, they were together, but I separated them yesterday also. We fed the rhino. Um, hopefully they bred. Not really sure. Maybe in the next few weeks, she'll, we'll start to see a difference in her. She does look pretty thick, yeah, but I, I always, I hate saying that snakes are gravid when they're not, you know what I mean? Just because I was so used to working at a reptile store all the time. You know, we would always get snakes in and be like, holy crap, this snake is fat, it's grabbing, blah, blah, blah. So we would always like make assumptions and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes they would just have big poops. Sometimes they would have babies. Or sometimes they would lay some eggs, you know? Depends. But let's uh, let's watch Rusty eat the rest of this chondro down. And then that is it for today. The next video, our next video is gonna be great. I'm really excited about it. It's gonna be a good time for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be a real good time. Finally doing a video at Chandler's new property. I've already been there. Um, we went there like a couple weeks ago, hung out, helped him move uh, helped him move that big fish tank that he has for the Fly River Turtle and stuff, which was an absolute nightmare. That tank was so freaking heavy. But it was a great day. Got to see his property. It's absolutely beautiful. Super it's, nice. Yeah, it's, it's probably like an hour and a half north of where I live. So we got a little bit of a road trip here um, to take, but it's gonna be a great little video. We're taking Richard, the new puppy, to go see Barra, you're bringing Penny, mm -hmm. Alex's dog Penny. I don't even think they've ever even met Penny. Mm -hmm. No? Anyways, all right, let's watch. Finish eating this food, Rusty, and then we're off to the next adventure. Always.
Alright, look at that. He's almost done. That's crazy because, bro, this Condro is probably like the head of this thing is probably like right there, dude. That's pretty nuts, bro. That is a big freaking meal, dude. Right? Rusty, you killed it. And that's great because Rusty hasn't eaten in it's been two weeks. Because the last, the last couple meals that we've been giving him have been bigger meals like this. Because we've been trying to work him up to those bigger chondros. And this is one of those bigger ones. Now, uh, my buddy that sent me all these snakes, a few of them were smaller. So that's what we worked with. And now we're down to these big ones. Now, the next two, we have two more left. So we actually need more. So anybody else has some more snakes out there you want to send? And they've been frozen. Hit me up. But, uh... He always got two more that are bigger than this one even. So next we're actually going to feed him a few Burmese pythons in the next couple weeks. Get him worked up, get some size on him. Because dude, this one snake, this is going to hold him off for the next two weeks. So hopefully between now. So today is March 22nd. So keep in mind today's date. You saw how big Rusty is today. In just two weeks. I think we're gonna see a difference because dude he's growing so fast I know you guys see it every time every time I post a new video with him you guys are like holy crap he like dude he grows like six inches every time I make a video it's crazy dude his colors are lightening up a lot his temperament is is decent he's doing good he's not a very super aggressive snake yet hopefully he stays like that I really I really hope that this snake has somewhat of a personality as Kevin has um, but you never know you know kings are kings are crazy dude they learn that they learn a lot about their environment and their handlers they learn certain things that you do handling methods and whatnot they learn your movements they yeah they're, they're very smart animals so that is it oh he's got a little see that wood chip in his mouth let's see if we can get that thing real fast hold up there all right bro so next video chandler's house puppy play date heard it here first i'm excited i'm pumped dude i'm pumped it's a really cool place yeah it is awesome and i haven't seen chandler's house last time i was there was when literally was before he even moved in and we were moving that fly river turtle tank so in I've the u-haul dude it was huh so i've seen more than you have yeah you've seen more than i have because alex was just there the other day yeah, so nice. yeah, I'm excited. He's got all the snakes there now. Oh He's gosh. got everything. There. Like I think everything is there. Pretty yeah, pretty much yeah. every single thing. I am excited. All right, guys. So, till next time, we're gonna be doing a lot more stuff on here now. Mm -hmm. We're back. Everything Summer, is summertime. Yeah, it's summertime, bro. Almost. It's, it's been really cold. cold. Like it's, yeah, it's cold right now. I know. Every time we say it's cold, you guys are like, no, it's actually cold where we are. Yeah, I know. I get it. It is actually cold where you guys are. But for us Floridians. We like making outdoor videos and going diving and all that stuff. It needs, it's cold. 60 cold. degrees here is cold. Yeah, especially for March. Yeah. Days, yeah, especially it's South Florida. It should never be this cold, bro. No, no, this is not cool. So, until next time, guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We're at 350 something thousand right now. Once we get to 400,000, we're flying somebody down here. You're going to come hang out with us. We're going to do a bunch of fun stuff. Go to Chandler's, go to DWF. We're going to go to Tom's. We're going to we're going to do some fun stuff. All right? I'm going to introduce you to all sorts of cool people. We're going to do all sorts of fun things. There's it's going to be do. an absolute blast. Be done. Right? Maybe even get a tattoo. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be cool. Should I give away a tattoo too? I need to do some tattoo sort too. of giveaways. We're going to do some giveaways. I'm working on some new merch. That's coming very soon. Some new stuff, a bunch of new merch, not just like a couple things, a bunch. I got some really good ideas. I'll tell you about here's a bit in the off camera because you guys can't know yet this place. But yeah, all right, I'm just rambling. Till next time, guys, we're gonna have all sorts of fun stuff. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, don't miss anything, turn on those notifications, okay? Just do it. Yes, peace out, bye.